Welcome to Anchoviverse. I'm Steve Cranfield and I'm here to talk about a new collection of poetry that I've written called Keats's Anchovy. Um, and I've entitled this short talk Beyond Likeness and Illustration because just as some visual art can uh, move beyond straightforward pictorial representation of the external world. So poetry, in my view, can do more and more interesting things for the reader than simply attempting to illustrate a, an image or a sculpture in words. And I'm going to talk about this in relation to one of the poems in the book called The Lizard 1946. Uh, and uh, I suppose I'm going to attempt in a way to show how a poem attempts to enter into a kind of dialogue with visual art. As I said, uh, the poem's in a book called Keats's Anchovy. Uh, so let's uh, open the tin and see what's inside. One of the sections of the book is called Homage to Isabel Rawsthorne. Now, Isabel Rawsthorne uh, was uh, uh, is probably best known uh, to many people as the person who inspired a number of artists to some of their greatest work, including artists like uh, Jacob Epstein, Francis Bacon, Francis P uh, Pablo Picasso, uh, Alberto Giacometti. She was drawn, painted and sculpted by uh, many of the, uh, these artists and many more. But what that uh, has done is obscure the, the value and or the importance of Rawsthorne as an artist in her own right and in fact an artist who was the intellectual equal of many of the people that uh, she inspired as a model or as a subject. Um, and I've written a number of poems in the book, um, which I've called a homage to Isabel Rawsthorne, some 11 poems, uh, and they are based on paintings of hers from the 1940s to the early 1990s. She died in 1992. And the poem that I'm particularly interested in talking about today is called Lizard 1946. Now, I'm not someone who's ever lived for any length of time in close proximity to animals. I've never had a pet. So what interested me in, in Rawsthorne's work, particularly her work around uh, the natural world, was the way in which she seeks to convey or embody her perceptions uh, and responses to uh, natural objects uh, in a way that indicates that not only has she looked at the object, but she's touched it, she's smelt it, she's heard it. Um, she's related to it as an organism and a being in the world around her. So she's not simply just looked at an object and just put pen to paper or paint to canvas. So let's look at the uh, the image that uh, is behind the paint or the the poem that I've done. Uh, and I came across this image in a book by Carol Jacobi called Out of the Cage: The Art of Isabel Rawsthorne and uh, it's, uh, Isabel Rawsthorne painted this picture in 1946 while she was living in somewhat straight and straightened circumstances in northern France during a very very cold winter uh, without much access to artist materials um, or lighting heating or whatever um, so so uh, in some in some respects it's an image that was created um, against the odds let's have a look a bit closer at the image so that you can get a closer look at it. Uh, here it is again. Uh, again, I've, I've reproduced this from um, uh, Jacobi's book uh, and the copyright is uh, uh, it belongs to the estate uh, of um, Rawsthorne's uh, descendants. Uh, and you can see it's this S-shaped S, S object almost um, and I gather from uh, Jacobi's book that it was painted indoors. Um, whether or not it was painted indoors from sketches um, that is the earth or the uh, the floor of the house she was staying in the cottage, I don't know. Um, but uh, it's uh, to me it represents a, a, a lizard alive um, on, on, on a kind of soil, dried soil um, outdoors. So let's uh, look at the poem. Lizard, 1946. We both have four limbs, a head, eyes, nostrils, a spine that widens, a mouth that can stay shut. My toes too have been known in their time to splay. Shifting the weight from one foot to the other, child's play. Under certain conditions, I also can assume a tinge of green, a passable yellow. I even have tucked away somewhere the memory of a tail. But the maroon baked berth you lie on and make love to, straddling the cracks, goes to show how little we've in common. Your torso that twists a full ninety degrees says you'll have none of me, insists you're unbefriendable. 
Lizard 1946. There you go again. And uh, you can read the poem in its uh, original place, uh, and you can buy the book um, on Amazon, and you can uh, read more about the book uh, and its background in uh, on my website, uh, stevecranfield.co.uk. Thank you for listening.